Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, anybody in between or exempt. My name is Liz Bian and I will be your official hostess this evening. How are you? Welcome to PKMBI powered by Pecha Kucha. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, the Abbey Museum, the Southwest Harbor Public Library, and the Northeast Harbor Library. So let's have a round of applause for all of our sponsors because without them, none of this would be possible. Now, our theme for tonight's presentation is the Acadia Centennial, the National Park Centennial. Happy birthday, Acadia National Park. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And our first presenter has been very influential in planning the entire Centennial program package. Now, this man is so dedicated to planning the Centennial that he has also been doing lots of research into cryogenic freezing so that he can be here to plan Acadia's Bicentennial. <laughs> Jack's wife, Sandy, wants nothing then for him to be happy and wishes him all the best. <laughs> now, I would like to welcome to the stage, Jack Russell. Present and time past are both perhaps present in time future, and time future contained in time past. So writes the poet. I offer Acadia's 13.8 billion year natural history in 400 seconds. Let us explore. Stand at dawn on Cadillac, Acadia's domed masses worn deep within the earth thousands of miles from here, millions of years ago. Ice scoured them bare to shine beneath ancient moons. Life abundant returned after the ice, formed from primal fire. The singularity began space and time as we conceive space time. Human reason can comprehend the development of all matter in this cosmic bloom, from stars and galaxies to our own planet, fellow creatures, home island, and cells. It is our evolved nature to do so. Hydrogen and helium ruled the young universe. They were the building blocks of all matter to come, including the rocks on Mount Desert, the sea that bounds them, the trees on her slopes, all generations who lived on these shores, and the minds that now read and hear these words. Matter formed trillions of stars and billions of galaxies. Now we know how stars form, live, and die. For size, for stars, size is destiny. Small stars burn for billions of years to expire quietly. Large stars burn fast to die as supernovas. Supernovas forge complex elements that create the cosmic force to life. When Somme sailed up the sound in 1762, the anchor that held him fast and the axe that cleared his land were made from starborn iron. The gold bands given an island while a weddings to come were from the heavens. 4.6 billion years ago, a supernova shook shock wave compressed and rotated matter to form our solar system. That created conditions from which intelligent life could evolve, a planet with a carbon-rich chemistry near a middling star, abundant water, and a complex dynamic atmosphere. Young Earth was convulsed from within and bombarded from beyond, a violent place seared by solar radiation, constant lightning, and huge volcanoes. Earth's greatest trauma came when a giant asteroid strike exploded masses of rubble into the space that became our moon. Cooling Earth's crust came to, broke through to move plates with upwelling convection currents from, molten, from its molten core. The movement of these plates through time is geologic history. We now know the providence of Acadia during the half billion years that formed and delivered her bedrocks to this place. From the Cambrian to the Silurian, four small plates detached from Godwana and drifted to Laurentia, creating the lands we now call Maine. Gander brought Ellsworth schist in the Bar Harbor Formation. As Gander and Avalon pressed into Laurentia, 
the main coast volcanic arc was created. 422 years ago, 20 million years ago, a mighty magma intrusion in this volcanic arc burst through bedrock in an eruption and caldera collapse. The caldera and later intrusions eroded to the mountains of Arcadia. The 10 mile wide caldera rim is our shatter zone. Ice ages come when continental plates drift to the poles, blocking warm ocean currents. Glaciers form when the elliptical orbit and tilt and wobble of Earth's axis bring less sunlight to poles. From 35 to 16,000 years ago, a glacier rough finished the shape and surface of Acadia. Glaciers sculpt and shut and it as they advance and slough and scatter as they retreat. The last glacier scoured the smooth northern slopes and plucked the southern faces of our mountains, cut valleys deep into make, her, make our lakes in the sound, and left a lithic load of moraines and erratics through which we now scatter. The waning glacier released Acadia. The sea rose faster than the weight depressed land. The gulf re reached all the way into Medway. Acadia was then many islands. When the land rebounded, the coast moved six miles south, to the, uh, south of the docks. Acadia was an inland mountain range. Life soon returned to the barren sea brown rocks left by the glacier. Organisms came in parades, simple to complex, likened to large to loom, entangled into dependence as the evolving bloom of life won billions of years in the past. The green thread of life goes back four billion years. Pools within the tide lines, window passages of life through time. Bacteria, algae, brine shrimp, crabs. While static, sanding sunlight mirrors the surface of a tide pool, we can glimpse our own curious species. Our species came here from away no more than 13,000 years ago. Our forebears left Africa 50 millennia before then to branch in many directions. One branch reached Asia, they domesticated wolves and took dogs with them across the sea drain Beringian land bridge. Perhaps they made a shore-hugging skin boat voyage down the western coast, or passed on land through a gap in the waning glacier. Perhaps they aimed both ways, carrying fire and life beyond the ice to a strange new land where the world was all before them. In two, two millennia, they crossed the continent eastward. Some exposed to the far, explored to the far northeast, tracking the life-giving caribou into tundra lands. They forged mighty post-glacial flows they would call Piscataqua, Kennebec, and Penobscot. They formed their word for the people they became, Wabanaki. Their long journey down to the shores of the water came to that moment we must ever forever imagine when human eyes first beheld these mountains as the fresh green breast of a new world. They named them with a grace that comes down to us as Pematic. So began the human history of this place. Thank you.